I am international chess master William Pascal. Truly international because I live in Hungary. Let's check it out now. Here in Central Europe, it's just before 10 a.m. It's about 10 minutes before 10. We have been warmed up and ready to go, so we're starting a few minutes early. And I'm hoping that we slowly get more and more viewers here, although the morning is, is kind of tough. We're going to get in a 15-minute pool. We had a nice visit from International Master Spinal Tap yesterday. And, you know, it's nice to know that somebody is willing to tune in at 6 o'clock in the morning to watch us play chess, you know? I mean, that's a real honor. So he's a true friend. Um, today we're going to do the usual thing. I'm still up in the air about Lee Chess. You guys, there's nobody on yet, but I'll just uh, fill up the air here with um, with the usual spiel because we will have people watching the um, replay, perhaps. So we're looking for 15-minute chess. We can play some five-minute chess to um, I enabled sounds. I'm playing around with the sounds. I don't like to move sounds because it's like continuous, bunk, bunk, bunk. Uh, but for other stuff, I've enabled sounds, and I think that will add a little bit of fun. But they're not sounds. Not all the chess sites have have sounds. Anyway, let's see. Jesus is um is playing really weird chess, man. Now, yesterday, I think I got a game I didn't really like against him. If he does something like c6, I'm not gonna mess around anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna just play like normal chess now. Bishop d3, and that's fine, dude. This is one spot where I could play h4. Uh, I don't really know. You know, that, that's kind of an unsound approach. Maybe knight e4 is worth a, worth a move there. I don't have much here. This is basically like Magnus Carlsen versus... It looks like a Magnus Carlsen versus Kramnik draw. Um, very popular, these simplified orthodox Queen's Gambits lately. It's a good way to get a draw against Magnus. I would imagine. Now this way, this guy's playing here is not really recommended because it creates a outside pass pawn for white. Now, I may be wrong. I mean, maybe, maybe in the given situation there's some kind of tactical problem for me that I'm not aware of. Here you can play queen f6. It, it didn't strike me at first, but it probably is fine for me. I just play f4. So, yeah, I'd have a bad pawn structure, but it probably wouldn't have a lot of relevance. The outside pawn is the danger for him here. Jesus always logged on at this time. This is pretty minimal for me, but he's um, he's a tricky player. I don't really mind getting a simplified position. I don't think he's that into... Um, uh huh. Bishop takes g2. Look at that. Now, I'm not sure I'm fully convinced about this. I have knight takes fd7 here. I may have just made a fatal blunder, indeed. Um... Man, bishop takes g2. That's pretty nasty. King takes g2. And king h1. I guess we'll have to do it. We're going to have to do it, and... My only justification is that he can't play knight takes e5 here. He has to go into the ending where the outside pawn is... Still very strong for me, so... Despite being down a pawn, it looks like I have some real chances here. Interesting, he goes with that, which I don't like. Um, you know, if he wants to raise pawn against pawn, I mean, it seems like my outside pawn is stronger. So let's do something like rook c1, blockade. Yesterday, for those of you who just joined us, yesterday I was reading a really, really good book that I highly recommend. Dynamic Chess Strategy by Grandmaster Miha Shuba Suba. And he has a funny, funny, like, little anecdotes in the book. But one of them, he was talking about blockading isolated pawns, you know. And he said that, um, was Nimzovich, of course, who 
you know, believe that you should blockade the blockade the isolated pawn. But the um, the later quote was Alekhin, who said, "It's not that you should try to blockade the isolated pawn; you should try to win the isolated pawn." And finally, he said that Larson said, "It's not." Um, no, you should try to. Alekhine said you should try to attack the isolated pawn, and I messed up the story. And Larson said you should try to win the isolated pawn. So, the final word is that you should try to win the um, the isolated or blockade pawn. And I agree. Blockading is not enough. You have to win it. So here I'm hoping for a draw, like a pawn down, three against four on the king side. My best chances probably lay in like rook versus rook with four against three on the king side. So we'd like to win the pawn, but he's not going to let us just do that. My technique, my technique here, leaving a lot to be desired. Um, again, I can play rook a3 with reasonable drawing chances. I wish my king was in the center here, and then I would almost certainly be fine. Uh, I thought about this, but I, I don't really understand uh, this particular sequence here. Okay, rook takes. Maybe he's playing for mate or something. I don't know. I do have to be careful. If rook b4, uh, he would have had a strong initiative. So I think he played this way too modestly now. Um, and actually, black has to be a little careful. Maybe I spoke too soon. I don't know. I think that I'm fine, though. It doesn't look like there's any way I can lose this position. Famous last words. If I let his king cross over, there's probably a good chance to lose. If I play rook c5, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Let's wait and see what happens. But I don't want to be too passive here. Okay. Welcome everybody to the chess stream. Hello. <laughs> Miklo Ping is supreme mugwump. Um, okay. Yeah, that's a cool name. What happens here if this guy goes after my pawn? I've got to go after his A pawn and try to create two connected passers. So, yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, the only thing he can do now is like advance his G and H pawns. But I think we can liquidate with rook c5. Uh, you know, actually, I could have played rook c5 before. Come to think of it, I mean, I can't imagine I can lose this. Now rook check. I mean, anything's good. All of his pawns are going to be hanging here. We have to settle for a draw, though. Uh, as far as I can tell, realistically, I mean, my king is out of the game. Yeah, it's a draw. All right, I like I like the sounds. I'm gonna replace the sounds with other sounds. I don't like these sounds that much. I have my own sounds that um, bring back some nostalgia for me. So let's try one more warm-up game. This guy's really tough. Anonymous Australian, I am. He's a good player. Um, this guy is not, you know, this guy's a real deal. He's a strong I am. I, I don't know, you know, how strong he is over the board, but at least in blitz, he's really strong. I like this variation with um, with black. Pawn takes d4, queen b6, and I have a really reasonable result here. So e6 first, and the knight on b3, as it is often in a Sicilian type of position, is not very well placed. And after knight c3, knight f6, Oftentimes, white plays a3 here to stop bishop b4. Bishop b4 is kind of like a main idea against g3. However, against g3, I also have additional ideas. Um, like h5, perhaps. But I suppose this is the main line. 
There's a good chance the Tetrarch um, better prepared than me in this line. I don't see any reason to take on to take on C3 right away. And actually, what's up with this? I mean, don't I have D5 here? This just is reminding me of some kind of pawn sacrifice. D5. Hmm. I'm recalling some kind of analysis, but I think it's not that clear. I guess now I blundered. I'm supposed to take on c3. He can play rook c1, and he's better. Ah, uh, sigh. Well, maybe we still have d5. We maybe have to, to try some kind of crazy pawn sacrifice here. Um, let's see. d5, cd5, cd5, ed5, queen e5, followed by bishop takes c3. Let's try it. Let's try it. Maybe I'm out of my mind. I don't know, but I feel like we're a little ahead in development, and um, if we can like clarify the whole center, we'll have to play against the bishop pair in an ending or something like that, but I won't have any real weaknesses, and hopefully I'm a tiny bit ahead in development. So the point is to try to get the pawn back here. Tetrarch is like, what is that? You can do that? Yeah, the point is like CD, CD, ED, Queen, E5. And I think... You know, he can't really stop me from bishop takes c3, followed by takes on d5. <laughs> I like your new name, Ikloping. What's the story with with the name? It's a place. Um, okay, we have to take on d5. But I'm trying to recall this variation and... I thought there was some sharp line. Maybe I'm supposed to play d5 first. I think that's what it is. But I was a little bit scared because of stuff involving... Um, I was honestly scared because of stuff involving um, bishop b5 check if I played it right away. So this is my this is my big line. I don't know if this is fully sound. If, if he has some refutation I didn't see here, I don't know. But... I don't think he does. So now we have a nice choice, and I think our position is fine. Queen takes d5, I would think, is okay. But, okay, knight takes d5 is more, more provocative. However, he has bishop c5, but I don't, I don't think that really is dangerous, is it? Let's go for it. I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to cha trade queens here. Oh, he does bishop d4. <sighs> That's fine, man. I mean, obviously we're good now. So he's admitting that he has, like, practically worse position now. Okay. Well, Tetrarch is... Um, I could play rook e8. It's definitely worth considering. Because the text move might improve his position just a tiny bit. Although, no, rook e8 allows bishop b5. B Alright, this is good enough. We're, we're fine here. And b6. So... Um, I'm slightly better. He has a better king. But I think in this case, the static... Mm, the static advantage is pretty significant with the situation so simplified. So, anyway, just as I started the channel, um, I was talking about... I was reading a book last night. Dynamic Chess Strategy by Grandmaster Mihai Suba. And it's highly highly recommended because he's, he's really such... Um, He's such an incredible wealth of knowledge about chess. The only the only criticism I have of Suba's books, because I also have his book on the Hedgehog, and he is kind of a mad genius, so he's not like the master of organization in terms of the book. Now here, bishop takes b5, bishop takes b5, knight f6 check is fine. Um, I'm going to play g6. I just feel like my king needs a